I just wanted to give you a call and ask how your Chattanooga trip was. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was more fun than a barrel of monkeys. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we took Ethan, and his being only eight, it was fun to watch him at different places and see him, you know, enjoying the activities. Well, what all did you do? Well, we decided to bypass the aquarium this time because he had just been to the Atlanta Aquarium. Uh So we kind of uh, picked and chose and drew straws and decided that we would go, first of all, to Rock City. He loved that, and I'll send you some pictures of that. Okay. And now there was one place in Rock City that I didn't particularly enjoy. What was that? It's called Fat Man Squeeze. Yeah. And when I was there when I was 10 years old, I thought that was a silly name because I slid right through. (laughs) Now at age 64 and a few pounds heavier, I think somebody moved the mountain (laughs) and made the hole thinner. Anyway, then Dad and Ethan went on the incline railway straight up. Look oh, out now. Did he like Low that? Looking Chattanooga. You know, he didn't like it as well as Rock City. Huh. He didn't seem nearly as enthused about it. But Dad enjoyed it. Um, then, what did we do? We went somewhere else. We ate at Ryan's. Mm-hmm. He likes that Ryan's, was, doesn't he? Oh, yes. Loves it. And he picked it because that uh, Irish place, Dirty Nellie's, was closed. They said it got busted several years ago for selling to minors or something. So anyway, then we went to the motel. Seems like we did something else. Did you go to any museums? Um, No. Oh, we went to a sculpture garden overlooking the river. That was fun. And Ethan really enjoyed that. Beautiful views. And oh, I almost forgot what I thought was the most fun thing. We went on a noon cruise down the river. And beautiful views and a good captain narrating, telling us what different things were. And that was really fun. Yeah. And yeah, then we went back to the motel that night and swam. Uh Uh-huh. And the next morning we got up, we met a guy from India in the little breakfast area. He was really nice. And was he living in Chattanooga? No, he was there studying as a student Oh, and getting his eyes full of the (laughs) American culture. Uh He he was really funny, and and he wanted to exchange emails. Now, I haven't heard from him, and I've lost his, but hopefully I'll hear from him if he didn't lose mine. And then we went to the Children's Museum, and Ethan enjoyed that. It's a hands-on Oh, Kid. like an exploratory. Right. Kids yeah. type of, well, it's called the Children's Museum. Mm-hmm. And uh, he really enjoyed that. And he got to do a lot of things, squirting water at people and making things and breaking things and building things and climbing things. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he had a lot of fun there. And then we came home. Oh, it was a really so short trip, huh? Trip. Oh, yeah, just overnight. It was long enough for Dad and me. Yeah. We were starting to, our tails were starting to drag. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was the weather? Oh, the weather was good. They said it was the most beautiful day all summer, the day we took the cruise. So we were very fortunate. Yeah. Just right. Not too hot, not too cool. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yes, it was wonderful. We were really lucky. Well, what was your favorite thing that you did? Well, my favorite thing was the cruise. Oh, I, I think Dad's. Said, okay. Yeah, I think Dad's maybe have, was the sculpture garden or the incline railway, and I think Ethan's was probably the uh, a Rock City. Yeah, I can remember really liking Rock City when I was little, and we went there. Right, they had a, a bird sanctuary there. They take birds that have been sick or hurt. And I'll get on my soapbox for a minute. I think more places need to do that and take care of animals that need taking care of. Yeah, I agree. But it was a great trip. Yeah, I'm glad you guys had a good time. Yeah, I am too. 
Well, I've got some work I need to get done, so... Oh, well, it was nice talking to you. Yeah, nice talking to you. I'll give you a call back um, later in the soon? week. Soon? Yeah. Okay. Hope to hear from you soon. All right. Tell Dad I said hi. I just wanted to check I on will. you guys getting back from your okay. trip. Okay. Thank you. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, this is AJ Hogue, and this is the mini story for Lookout Mountain. Let's get started. There was a guy. There was a guy named Lance. What was his name? Lance. His name was Lance. There was a girl. Was there a girl? Yes, there was. There was a girl. And what was her name? Her name was Gina. Gina. Lance loved Gina. Lance wanted to kiss Gina. Did Lance want to kiss Gina or did Lance want to talk to Gina. Lance wanted to kiss Gina. Did Gina want to kiss Lance? No, no, she didn't. Gina didn't want to kiss Lance. She said, no, I won't kiss you. But Lance loved Gina. He said, I love you. I want to kiss you. What did he say? He said, I love you. I want to kiss you. Who said, I love you. I want to kiss you. Lance said that. Lance said, I love you. I want to kiss you. Who did he say it to? Well, he said it to Gina. Lance said, I love you. I want to kiss you to Gina. Gina said, no way. No way means absolutely no. Absolutely not. No way. Gina said, no way. Did Gina want to kiss Lance? No, no way. She didn't. She said, no way. Lance said, please, 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 Gina, I love you. Gina looked at Lance. She thought, hmm. Then she said, okay, I'll make a bet with you. We run to San Francisco from New York. If I get there first, you give me $28,250. But if you win, I'll kiss you. Oh. Did Gina want to make a bet with Lance? Yes, she wanted to make a bet with Lance. Who did she want to make a bet with? With Lance. She wanted to make a bet with Lance. Who wanted to make a bet with Lance? Gina. Gina wanted to make a bet with Lance. What did she want to make? A bet. She wanted to make a bet with Lance. Did she want to swim? No, no, no. She didn't want to swim. She wanted to run. She wanted to make a bet. Run from San Francisco, I mean from New York to San Francisco. What was the bet? The bet was to run from New York to San Francisco. 
if Gina won, what would she get? $28,250. If Gina won, she would get $28,250. Who would get $28,250 if she won? Well, of course, Gina. Gina would get $28,250 if she won the bet, if she won the race. Would she get $28,279 if she won the race? No, 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 no. $28,250. She would get $28,250 if she won. If Lance won, what would Gina do? Well, if Lance won, she would kiss him. Would she kiss Lance if Lance won? Yes, she would. She would kiss Lance if he won. Would she kiss Lance if he lost the bet? No, no, no. She wouldn't kiss him if he lost. She would only kiss him if he won. Who would she kiss if he won the bet? Lance. She would kiss Lance if he won the bet. If Lance won the bet, who would kiss him? Gina. Gina would kiss him if he won the bet. What did Lance have to win? He had to win the bet. He had to win the race from New York to San Francisco. If he won the race, Gina would kiss him. Well, Lance said, that's too far. That's crazy. Gina laughed. <laughs> It'll be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Did Gina think the race would be fun. Oh, yes. She thought the race would be very, very fun. She thought the race would be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Super fun. Who thought the race would be more fun than a barrel of monkeys? Gina. Gina thought the race would be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Did Lance think the race would be more fun than a barrel of monkeys? No, 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 no. Lance didn't think the race would be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. He thought it was crazy. Gina thought the race would be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Did she think the race would be super fun or a little fun? Well, she thought the race would be super fun. She said, it'll be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And so they started the race. They started running from New York City. After 42 days, Lance arrived in Denver, Denver, Colorado. He was ahead of Gina. But he was starting to drag. When he arrived in Denver, was Lance ahead of Gina or behind Gina? Well, he was ahead of Gina when he arrived in Denver. Who was he ahead of when he arrived in Denver? He was ahead of Gina when he arrived in Denver. When he arrived where? 
Denver. When he arrived in Denver, he was ahead of Gina. When he arrived in Denver, how did Lance feel? Well, tired. He felt tired. He was starting to drag. He was starting to feel tired. He was starting to get tired. Lance was starting to drag. When was Lance starting to drag? When he arrived in Denver. Who was starting to drag? Lance. Lance was starting to drag. He was starting to what? To drag. He was starting to drag. He was starting to feel tired. Where was Lance starting to drag? Where was he? In Denver. When he was in Denver, he was starting to drag. And so Lance stopped to rest. <sighs> oh, 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 I'm starting to drag. <sighs> And then Gina was behind him, and she passed him. Gina passed Lance, and she laughed. Ha 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 ha! See you in San Francisco! Who passed Lance? Gina. Gina passed Lance. What did she do? She passed Lance. Did she cry when she passed Lance? No, she didn't cry when she passed Lance. She laughed when she passed Lance. Well, finally, they got near San Francisco. Gina was winning. She was two miles ahead of Lance. But she was also starting to drag both of them were dragging. Both of them were tired. Uh, 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 uh. Gina was ahead. But then Lance remembered his love. He ran faster. He ran faster and faster and faster. He remembered that he loved Gina. And suddenly he passed Gina, and arrived in San Francisco. Lance won the race! After he won, Lance said to Gina, I'll get on my soapbox a minute and say, You can't beat love. Okay, did he get on his soapbox? Yes, he got on his soapbox. Did he give a short speech about his opinion? Yes, yes. He talked about his strong opinion. He gave a short little speech about his opinion. What was his opinion? Well, his opinion was... You can't beat love. He said, I'll get on my soapbox and say, You can't beat love. Who got on his soapbox? Lance. Lance got on his soapbox. Lance said a strong opinion. Did Gina get on her soapbox? No, she didn't. She did not get on her soapbox. Gina did not say a strong opinion. She was quiet. Lance got on his soapbox. Lance said, I'll get on my soapbox a minute, and I'll say, You can't beat love. So Lance got on his soapbox. Gina said, Well... I guess you're right. And she kissed Lance. 
Lance was very, very happy. He won the race. He won the bet. And he finally kissed Gina. The end. Okay? As always, listen to this mini-story every day. Every day for seven days or more. Good luck. Enjoy the story. Enjoy your English learning. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, this is AJ Hogue. Let's get started with the point of view lessons for Lookout Mountain. Our first story is happening now. There's a guy. His name is Lance. There's a girl. Her name is Gina. Lance loves Gina. Lance wants to kiss Gina. But Gina doesn't want to kiss Lance. She says, no, I won't kiss you. But Lance loves Gina. He says, I love you. I want to kiss you. Gina says, no way. Lance says, please, 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 Gina. I love you. Gina looks at Lance. She thinks, hmm. Then she says, okay, I'll make a bet with you. We run to San Francisco from New York. If I get there first, you give me $28,250. But if you win, I'll kiss you. Lance says, that's too far. That's crazy. Gina laughs. It'll be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And so they start the race. They start running from New York City. After 42 days, Lance arrives in Denver, Denver, Colorado. He is ahead of Gina, but he is starting to drag. And so Lance stops to rest. He says, oh, I'm starting to drag. And then Gina is beside him and she passes him. Gina passes Lance and she laughs. Ha <laughs> ha, see you in San Francisco. Well, Finally, they get near San Francisco. Gina is winning, but she's also starting to drag. Both of them are dragging. Both of them are tired. Gina's ahead, but then Lance remembers his love. He runs faster. He runs faster and faster and faster, and he remembers that he loves Gina, and suddenly he passes Gina and arrives in San Francisco. Lance wins the race. After he wins, Lance says to Gina, I'll get on my soapbox a minute and say, You can't beat love. Gina says, Well, I guess you're right. And she kisses Lance. Lance is very, very happy. He wins the race. He wins the bet. And he finally kisses Gina. The end. All right, our next story is in the future, sometime in the future. Sometime in the future, there will be a guy, and his name is going to be Lance. And there's going to be a girl. Her name will be Gina. Lance will love Gina. Lance will want to kiss Gina. But Gina won't want to kiss Lance. She'll say, no, I won't kiss you. But Lance will love Gina. He'll say, I love you. I want to kiss you. Gina's going to say, no way. Lance will say, please, 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 Gina. I love you. Gina will look at Lance. She'll think, hmm. Then she'll say, okay, I'll make a bet with you. We run to San Francisco from New York. If I get there first... You give me $28,250. But if you win, I'll kiss you. Lance will say, That's too far. That's crazy. And then Gina will laugh. It'll be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And so they'll start the race. They'll start running from New York City. 
After 42 days, Lance will arrive in Denver, Denver, Colorado. He'll be ahead of Gina, but he'll start to drag. He'll stop to rest and he'll say to himself, I'm starting to drag. And then, at that time, Gina will pass him. She'll pass Lance and she'll laugh. <laughs> See you in San Francisco. Finally, they'll get near San Francisco. Gina will be winning. She'll be two miles ahead of Lance. Both of them will be dragging. Both of them will be tired. But Gina will be ahead. At that time, Lance will remember his love. He'll run faster. He'll run faster and faster and faster. And he'll remember that he loves Gina. Suddenly, he'll pass Gina and he'll arrive in San Francisco. Lance is going to win the race. And after he wins, Lance is going to say to Gina, I'll get up on my soapbox now and say, you can't beat love. Gina will say, well, I guess you're right. And she'll kiss Lance. Lance will be very, very happy. He'll win the race, he'll win the bet, and he'll finally kiss Gina. The end. Okay, and finally, our last one. There was a guy. His name was Lance. There was a girl. Her name was Gina. Since 10 years ago, Lance has loved Gina. For 10 years, Lance has wanted to kiss Gina. And for 10 years, Gina has not wanted to kiss Lance. Every time she has said, no, I won't kiss you. But for 10 years, Lance has loved Gina. He has always said to her, I love you. I want to kiss you. And Gina has always said, no way. Lance has always begged. He has always said, Please, please, Gina, I love you. Well, one day, Gina looked at Lance, and she thought, and she said, Okay, I'll make a bet with you. We run to San Francisco from New York. If I get there first, you give me $28,250. But if you win, I'll kiss you. Lance said, that's too far, that's crazy. And Gina laughed. It'll be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And so they started the race. They started running from New York City. After 42 days, Lance arrived in Denver, Denver, Colorado. He was ahead of Gina, but he was starting to drag. And so Lance stopped the rest. He said to himself, I'm starting to drag. And right then, Gina was behind him and she passed him. Gina passed Lance and laughed. Ha ha ha! See you in San Francisco. Well, finally they got near San Francisco. Gina was winning. She was two miles ahead of Lance. But she was also starting to drag. Both of them were dragging. Both of them were tired. Gina was ahead. But then, Lance remembered his love. He ran faster. He ran faster and faster and faster. And he remembered that he loved Gina. And suddenly he passed Gina and arrived in San Francisco first. Lance won the race. After he won, Lance said to Gina, I'll get up on my soapbox now and I'll say, You can't beat love. And Gina said, Well, I guess you're right. And she kissed Lance. And Lance was very, very happy. He won the race. He won the bet. And he finally kissed Gina. The end. And that is the end of the point of view stories for Lookout Mountain. See you next time. Bye bye. Hello, this is AJ Hogue. Welcome to the vocabulary lesson for Lookout Mountain. In this conversation, Kristen 
talks to her mother and her mother, Susan, talks about a trip that a family trip they took with um, Ethan and Kristen's dad. Now, Ethan is Kristen's nephew. Remember, it's the child, uh, the son of Kristen's brother, right? The nephew. So Kristen's mom, Kristen's dad, and Kristen's nephew went on a short family trip to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga is a city. And near Chattanooga, there are some sites, some places to see. One is called Rock City. Uh, another site near Chattanooga is called Lookout Mountain. So uh, Kristen's mom, Kristen's dad, and her nephew Ethan, they all went to these places. And uh, in this conversation, Kristen's mom talks about the trip. All right, let's get started. So in the uh, second sentence, Susan, Kristen's mom, says, Oh, the trip was great. It was great. It was more fun than a barrel of monkeys. More fun than a barrel of monkeys. Now that's a uh, idiom, very kind of old idiom, um, uh, and it means just a lot of fun. It's kind of a joke. It's kind of a now. If we say that, it's a little bit old-fashioned, a little bit kind of from the past. So when you say it, it it's you know it. it it's kind of said in a joking way. But the meaning is, it's a, it was a lot of fun. It was more fun than a barrel of monkeys means it was a lot of fun. It was really fun. Okay, more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Very, very fun. Okay, Kristen laughs and uh, her mom says, you know, we took Ethan. Again, that's Kristen's nephew. And he's eight years old. And it was fun to watch him, uh, you know, at the different places they went to and fun to watch him enjoying the activities. Uh, they bypassed the aquarium. It means they went, they didn't go to the aquarium. They went past the aquarium, but didn't go in. Because uh, they had already taken him to the Atlanta Aquarium in the past. And so, Susan says, uh, we picked and chose and drew straws and decided we would go first to Rock City. Okay, to draw straws. Our past is drew straws. It means to choose randomly. To choose randomly. So maybe you have uh, five different things to do, and you randomly choose two, or you randomly choose one. That's what to draw straws means, to choose randomly. Okay, it's another idiom. Okay, and there she, uh, they talk about going to Rock City, and there was a place in Rock City called Fat Man Squeeze. It's just it's a, a narrow place with two rocks, and you have to go in between the two rocks, but they're close together. So if you're fat, you cannot go through. So Susan, Kristen's mom, uh, laughs that 10 years ago she could go through easily, but now she's 64 years old, she's heavier, and uh, it wasn't easy to go through. And then after they went to Rock City, they went to Lookout Mountain, which is a big, big mountain, and they rode an incline railway. Incline, of course, means uh, going up, so it's a railway that went Straight up, straight up the side of the mountain. And Kristen asked, did he like it? Did Ethan like the, uh, the, uh, the mountain? It was overlooking Chattanooga. And she said, oh, he didn't like it as well as Rock City. So he liked Rock City more. He was not as enthused about it, was not as excited about it. But Kristen's dad enjoyed it. Um... After that, they went to eat at a restaurant named Ryan's. Ryan's is the name of the restaurant. And uh, I guess Ethan likes Ryan's. Her little nephew likes Ryan. Um, 
And she said they didn't go to another restaurant, a, a place called Dirty Nelly's. So maybe they usually go to Dirty Nelly's restaurant, but it was closed. The reason it was closed is it got busted. Got busted several years ago for selling to minors. To get busted means to get in trouble or to get arrested. It often means to get arrested by the police or to get in trouble with the police. So their favorite restaurant, Dirty Nelly's, it got busted. So the police closed the restaurant. Why did they close the restaurant? They closed the restaurant because it was selling to minors. Selling what? Well, selling alcohol. She doesn't say it, but that's what she means. So the restaurant was selling alcohol to minors. A minor is a person who is younger than 18 years old. I'm sorry, younger than 21 for alcohol. So someone younger than 21 cannot buy alcohol. And if a restaurant sells alcohol to someone who's too young, they can get busted. They can get in trouble with the police. Okay, so they didn't go to Dirty Nelly's restaurant. They went to Ryan's. She asked, did you go to any museums? And uh, Susan says, well, no, they went to a garden on the river, and they did a cruise, and it had beautiful views. There was a good captain who was narrating, who was talking about the city and talking about the views. And then they went back to the hotel, the motel, that night, and they swam. Uh, and then she said at the, at the motel, they met a guy from India in the breakfast area, and he was really nice. He was living in Chattanooga. Oh, he was there studying as a student. And getting his eyes full of American culture. Susan says he was getting his eyes full of the American culture. So getting his eyes full of American culture just means he was seeing a lot of American culture. He was really seeing a lot of it, getting his eyes full. And uh, Kristen says, uh-huh. And then Susan says, he was really funny. He wanted to exchange emails. And then after they met the Indian guy, they went to ch a children's museum, a hands-on museum, like an exploratory. Kristen calls it an exploratory. It's a kind of museum for children. Uh, it's hands-on. It means the children can touch things. They can play with things. It's not just looking. You can also touch. That's a, that's a hands-on museum or children's museum. Sometimes they, they're called exploratory museums. So it was a children's museum. They had a lot of fun there. And then she said, you know, Kristen says, so it was a really short trip. Susan says, yeah, it was, it was a good trip, just overnight, but long enough. And she said, we were starting to, our tails were starting to drag. Okay, so we were starting to drag, or our tails were starting to drag. Tails here means your butt, right? Your butt was starting to drag. It just means they were getting tired. To drag or to start to drag means to start to feel tired or to start to be tired. So if I can say, oh, whew, I'm starting to drag, it means I'm getting tired. I'm starting to feel tired. Very common phrase. So anytime you begin to feel tired, you can say, I'm starting to drag. Okay, so they were starting to drag. At the end of the trip, Susan and Kristen's dad, they were starting to feel tired. They were starting to drag. Then Kristen asks about the weather, and uh, Susan says it was a beautiful day all summer. Um, it was very nice. It was wonderful. Okay, and then um, she says, what was the favorite thing you did? So she wants to know, what did her mom, what did Susan enjoy most? And her favorite thing was the cruise, the cruise on the river. And she said, and then Kristen's dad's favorite thing was the garden or the railway at the Rock City. Um, 
Kristen says, yeah, I remember liking La Rock City when I was little. So when Kristen was a child, she also had been to uh, Rock City. She also went to Rock City when she was a child. And then Susan said uh, they had a bird sanctuary, uh, a place where they take birds that have been sick or hurt, and then they help the birds. They help the animals. And Susan says, I'll get on my soapbox for a minute. And she says, I think more places need to do that. More places need to take care of animals. Okay, to get on your soapbox, or I'll get on my soapbox. It means I'm going to give a speech. Or I'm going to uh, say something strong. It, it's an it's an idiom. It comes from the idea of uh, being in public, being around people, and getting a box, standing on top of the box, and then giving a speech. You can imagine in the past, long ago, if you want to give a speech, maybe you stand on top of something. Maybe stand on top of a box, for example, and then everybody can see you. Right? So it comes from this idea of giving a speech. So if you say, I'm going to get on my soapbox now, it means you're going to give a speech. Uh, you're, you're going to tell your strong opinion about something. So her strong opinion is more places need to take care of animals. She has a strong opinion. This is a strong idea for Susan. So she says, I'm going to get on my soapbox. I'm going to tell you a strong opinion. And then she says her opinion. And Kristen says, I agree. Uh, she agrees that more places need to take care of animals. Susan says, it was a great trip. And um, she says, yeah, you know, I'm glad you guys had a good time. And then they kind of finish the conversation. She says, nice talking to you. Um, I'll give you a call back later in the week. So I'll call you again later. And then Chris, Susan says, okay, hope to hear from you soon. Kristen says, all right, tell Dad I said hi. And um, that's the end. You know, they say, okay, okay, love you, love you, bye. And that is the end of the conversation. So that is the end of the vocabulary for Lookout Mountain.